1932, started as the year of ordinances, mass arrest, and imprisonment. Don Beaton sent a telegram to the Viceroy deploring the ordinances and suggested an interview. Lord Willingdon was willing only to see him and not to discuss the ordinances. When the news effort failed, Gandhiji said, Government has banged the door in my face. On the 4th of January, Gandhiji was arrested. Only a few weeks earlier, he was the guest of His Majesty the King at Buckingham Palace. And now he was the King's guest of the year of that day. The civil disobedience movement was resumed. The authorities launched a ruthless attack on the Congress. All important leaders were arrested. During the first four months, over 66,000 arrests had been made. This included 5,000 women and even children. Samuel Hoare, Secretary of State, said, We are determined to take every action in our power to suppress this challenge to our authority. Four more ordinances were promulgated, giving extraordinary powers to magistrates and police officers. According to Jawaharlal Nehru, civil liberties ceased to exist, and both persons and property could be seized by the authorities. The Congress was declared illegal, and its headquarters at Paraj Bhavan seized by the police. The British government called the civil disobedience movement lawless, but there was more lawlessness in the brutal police repression. For the people of India, it was a non-violent protest against the ruthless alien administration. They took out processions and held public meetings. There was picketing of little shops and British institutions. Boycott and burning of British goods. The national flag was hoisted on public buildings. Police pulled down the national flag and beat up the volunteers, including women and children. Farmers set fire to their crops and refused to pay taxes on land revenue. The authorities imposed punitive fines on villages which had refused to pay taxes on revenue. In 1932, when Gandhi learned that the government was proposing to grant separate electorates to the scheduled caste, he wrote to the Secretary of State, a separate electorate for the depressed classes is harmful for them and for Hinduism, and added that if the government decided to create a separate electorate, I must pass unto death. Representatives of the depressed classes met in Bombay under the presidentship of N.T. Raja and declared that the true interests of the depressed classes could be promoted only by joint electorate. Dr. Makhul Ahmad Ansari said that the Ten Years' Award was bound to create bitterness. On the 17th of August, 1932, the British Prime Minister, Ramsay MacDonald, announced the communal award. It divided the Indian people into 11 different categories, like Hindus, Muslims, Christians, depressed classes, backward classes, landholders, and so on. The award was condemned by all sections of the Indian people as it was clearly a British scheme to perpetuate the curse of unsaturability. Protest meetings were held all over the country. 
in Lahore, over 20,000 Sikhs held a meeting under the presidency of Sardar Kharak Singh and vehemently protested against the award. Gandhiji declared that he would start his fast unto death from the 20th of September, 1932. He wrote to Gurudev Tagore, I enter the fiery gate at noon. If you can bless the effort, I want you. On that day, in every part of the country, millions prayed and fought. At Yeravra Jail, Mahatma Gandhi lay on a cot under a mango tree. Sadar Patel, Sarojin Naidu, and Kasurba sat near him. Outside the jail, there were hectic consultations between leaders of the different classes and the Hindus. N. R. Jaikar, Radha Gopalachari, Tej Bahadur Sapru, and G. D. Birla held a series of discussions with Dr. Munge, Dr. Ambedkar, and Dr. Solanki to find a solution. Vithalbhai Patel explained the reasons for the Mahatma's fast. Mahatma Babu, and every leader in India thinks but this is a part and parcel of the deliberate policy of the British government to dissolve and rule in India. This half is a protest against the whole policy of the British government of dissolving India into one side compartment and rule, continue the rule in the country. The staff was having its effect on orthodox Hindu society. Kali Ghat Temple in Calcutta and Ram Mandir in Banaras were thrown open to the untouchable. Gandhiji held long talks with Dr. Ambedkar and M.C. Raja. He said that it was the duty of Hindu reformers to treat the press classes as a sacred trust. Sage Bahadur Sapru came out with a plan which was acceptable to Dr. Ambedkar and the Mahatma. It was agreed that a number of Hindu scheduled caste chiefs would be earmarked in advance for the scheduled caste. Hindu and scheduled caste candidates would be elected jointly. The Puna Pact categorically asserted that no one shall be regarded as untouchable by reason of his birth. And the press classes were given 148 chiefs against only 71 announced in the McDonald Award. The fact was accepted by the British Prime Minister. Gandhi D. broke his fast at 5 p.m. on the 26th of September, 1932. On his birthday, the 2nd of October, 1932, Mahatma Gandhi received numerous gifts in the form of temples all over the country, opening their doors to the untouchable. In February 1933, from his prison cell, Gandhiji organized the Harijan Seva Sangh, with Didi Birla as its president. He also started a weekly publication, Harijan, to promote the welfare of the depressed class. During the early 30s, the country lost many towering personalities. Motilal Nehru had died on the 6th of February, 1931, at Lucknow. In July, 1933, Satyendra Mohan Sengupta died while in police custody. His funeral in Calcutta, according to Nehru, was the occasion for a remarkable mass demonstration and tribute. It seemed that the long pent up suffering soul of Bengal had found an outlet for a while at least. In November 1933, India lost another veteran freedom fighter, Vithal Bhai Patel, at Bombay. On the 8th of May, while still in prison, 
Gandhi D. embarked on his self-purification path to impress upon his countrymen the importance of service before self. Gandhi D. was released unconditionally. As a gesture of goodwill, he suspended the civil disobedience movement. Gandhi D. disbanded the Sabarmati Ashram and converted it into a training center for constructive programs. He now moved to Vardha in the central provinces because geographically it was the center of India. His new headquarters at Sevagram was the gift of Jamnalal Bajaj. On the 7th of November, 1932, Gandhi Ji embarked on a 10 month long tour of India to promote rural development and uplift of the depressed classes. He selected funds for hygiene welfare. At this instant, Guru Vayu temples in Kerala and many other shrines were thrown open to the scheduled task. Bills were introduced in the Central Assembly and the Madras Legislature for the abolition of untouchability. He organized the All India Spinners Association and the Village Industries Association. On the 15th of January, 1934, several towns and villages of Bihar were destroyed by a severe earthquake. Gandhiji, Jawaharlal Nehru and other leaders visited the stricken people to provide Saka and relief. The industrial workers had by now become part of the freedom movement. Mill owners were making enormous profits, while workers were kept on starvation wages. Textile workers of Bombay and Ahmedabad went on strike. Several mills were closed. But now, 17th of May, 1934, the Socialist Party of India was born as part of the Congress organization. Ram Manohar Logia, Jaitakash Narayan, Narendra Dev, S.M. Joshi, Achit Patwardhan, and others were among the participants. The Congress Socialist Party developed a close liaison with the Kisan Sabha movement in Bihar and Andhra Pradesh and organized Kisan Mark. In 1934, the Congress appointed a parliamentary board to examine the implications of the white paper published after the third round table conference. Congress asserted that the only satisfactory alternative to the White Paper was a constituent assembly of the Indian members elected on the basis of adult suffrage. The 1934 session of the Congress was held at Khan Abdul Ghaffar Nagar at Bombay. Veed Nariman was the chairman of the reception committee. Dr. Rajendra Prasad presided over the session. Gandhiji resigned from the Congress to be able to devote his time and energy to rural development and the uplift of the distressed class. The Sarajya party was revived to fight the election and fight for independence from within the council. Congress had put up 49 candidates for the Central Assembly. By winning 44 seats, the organization vindicated the fact that the Congress was the most popular mass movement. During the 30s, the All India State People's Conference under Balwantrai Mehta had become active in many princely states and was demanding the people's share in the government. Jamnalal Bajaj, a close associate of Gandhiji, led a people satyagraha in Jaipur. U. N. Dhebar led the Kaja Parishad movement in Kathiawa. In Sheikh Abdullah, the people of Jammu and Kashmir had found a dynamic leader. He was popularly called the Lion of Kashmir. 
Government of India Act of 1935 was passed on the 2nd of August. A federal form of government in the center was envisaged, and provinces were to be delegated a certain amount of power and authority. Burma was separated from India. Two new provinces of Orissa and Sindh were created. The Indian National Congress condemned the act as it was designed to perpetuate the domination and exploitation of the people of India by the British. The Golden Jubilee of the Congress was celebrated in December 1935 with great enthusiasm. Tens of thousands of volunteers marched through the streets of various towns and cities to reaffirm their resolve to fight for complete independence. A martyr's memorial was unveiled at Bombay. Jawan Lal Nehru had been released and allowed to go to Europe to be with his ailing wife, Kamla. Kamla Nehru died on 28th of February, 1936. Jawan Lal returned to India with her ashes. During his absence, Jawaharlal Lal Nehru had been elected president of the Lucknow session of the Congress, which met on the 29th of April, 1936. Congress condemned the 1935 Act as being far short of India's demand. But it was ready to consider the question of contesting the Assembly election. Jawaharlal Nehru's working committee included well-known socialists like Jay Prakash Narayan, Acharya Narendra Dev, and Achyut Patwardhan. In December 1936, Jawaharlal was re-elected president of the Congress at Fairsport. The Congress welcomed eminent leaders who had been released from jail. Although the Congress had criticized the 1935 Act earlier, it now decided that acceptance of office was not a negation of its earlier policy. In the words of the Congress President Jawaharlal Lal Nehru, the real object before us is to build up a powerful joint front of all the anti-imperialistic forces in the country. We go to the legislators not to cooperate with the apparatus of British imperialism, but to combat the act and seek to end it. Congress conducted the election campaign as a new phase of the freedom movement. Its aim was to attain power for the benefit of the Indian people. In spite of various restrictions, the party was able to reach out to the people of all communities in all parts of the country. The Indian National Congress emerged as the largest single party in the provinces of Bombay, Bengal, Assam and Northwest Frontier. It won an absolute majority in Madras, Bihar, Central Provinces, United Provinces, and Orissa. The AICC decided to authorize acceptance of office by the party legislators only on condition that the governors would not use their special powers of interference in the working of the popular ministry. On receiving such an assurance from the Viceroy, Congress governments were installed in seven states on the 7th of July, 1937. The task before the Congress was transformation of the agrarian system, improvement of standards of living of industrial labor, uplift of the scheduled caste, development of village industries, and the search for a solution to the communal problem. To free India, to build up a strong and prosperous nation.